What's going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to the Indianapolis Colts Syndicate, where today we're going to be talking about some of the training camp standouts for the Indianapolis Colts. Up to this point, we're about two weeks through training camp at this point, and there have been some guys that have really been showing out pretty much every single day in practice. And I want to start here with Kylan Granson, somebody who's kind of become a fan favorite over the last few years. But because of quarterback play with Carson Wentz and Matt Ryan, respectively, Kylan Granson really hasn't had all the opportunity that he should have for a tight end to be able to make plays after the catch the way he does. Is a really valuable asset. And what he's been able to do in training camp, you hope that that can translate into the regular season with this new offense. You have new quarterbacks, you know, quarterback that can actually throw the ball, a couple quarterbacks that can move. So I feel really good about the fact that Kylan Granson, from what we've been hearing in training camp, he's been balling out. He's been getting reps with the first team on a regular occasion. I think he's going to be a pretty major factor in what the Colts are trying to do on the offensive side of the ball. You know, this Shane Steichen offense is going to be based around getting run after the catch for some of these guys. Kylan Granson, Josh Downs, Isaiah McKenzie being the three guys that we're really going to look at for run after the catch in 2023. So again, Kylan Granson doing great in training camp so far. One of the camp standouts up to this point. Another guy that's been balling out up to this point in training camp is Daryl Baker Jr. He's the only defensive guy that I have on this list. You know, Colts defense was really good last year, and there are some young guys that are out with injury right now, not been practicing. So Daryl Baker Jr. has had a chance to step into a role where he's getting reps in the first team, in the second team, one-on-one -on -one with some of these receivers. And he's made the most of it from everything that I've heard. Now, if you don't know the name Daryl Baker Jr., he's an undrafted free agent who is in his second season in the NFL. He was picked up and waived by the Cardinals in 2022 before the regular season ever started. But then the Colts picked him up in early September 2022. He spent the entire season on the practice squad. And this year, again, because of Juju Brents being out with injury, Darius Rush has only practiced once or twice since coming back from his injury in training camp. And of course, Isaiah Rogers suspended and he's been cut. He's not on the team anymore. Stefan Gilmore got traded. So Daryl Baker Jr. has been thrusted into a position where he's getting reps and he's making the most of it. So it's going to be interesting to see once Juju Brents come back. Now that Darius Rush is getting into the fold of things, how are things going to work out with Daryl Baker Jr.? Because we've also heard Dallas Flowers. He's a guy that we kind of looked at last year, never really had the opportunity, but the opportunity looks like it's going to be there this year for Dallas Flowers. But with Daryl Baker making Jr., will he overtake Dallas Flowers? And will Dallas Flowers just stay as a return guy in 2023? That is something we're going to be looking at as training camp continues to unfold. Something else we're going to be looking at to unfold as training camp goes on is how Baker does in his one-on-one -on -one situations. You know, I feel like for the most part during team drills, you know, seven on seven or 11 on 11, he does pretty good. But when you get in those one-on-one -on -one situations, it's just man on man. He's been getting beat pretty much every time in those man on man situations. Um, you know, he's somebody who uses his athleticism, right? He's, he's really fast. He uses his, his speed to try to make up ground on these receivers. But in the NFL, it doesn't always work that way. You got to be a technician. So I expect that they're going to continue to work with him on that. I know Gus Bradley was talking about the fact that he's a technician in the zone scheme. He needs to be a technician in the man scheme also. So again, that's something else we're going to be looking at with Daryl Baker. Now, probably the most exciting name on this list is going to be Anthony Richardson. It's nice to be able to have him here. You know, I really, coming into training camp, I didn't expect him to be a camp standout. I thought there would be a lot of learning curve that would be happening and that he would be finding it hard to adjust to the NFL game, only having 13 starts, his completion percentage being what it was at 53.8 in college. So I really expected him to struggle. He's only had one bad day where he was 5 for 13 and threw an interception, but that was also his first practice back after having the nose procedure so I'm wondering if that had something to do with it because the very next day he went into practice, was taking first team reps and was absolutely lighting the defense up. You know, I th he threw a bad interception on one of his first throws, but the rest of that practice proceeded to light the defense up. And then when they went back to practice on Thursday, he was taking first team reps again. 
and Shane Steichen came out and said that that was because he missed practice Monday, so they wanted to get him more reps with the first team. So it's going to be interesting to see, are they going to go ahead and swap them at Saturday's practice? They'll be practicing between 6 and 7.30 tonight. So I'm going to be watching to see, is Richardson taking first team reps again, or are they going to swap them again? Go ahead and give Minshew the first team reps. Go ahead and give Richardson the second team reps and keep them like that and keep swapping them throughout the training camps and, and throughout preseason games. So if you're watching this before training camp practice on Saturday, that's something to note. Whoever practices with the first team tonight is probably going to be taking first team reps next week as well. Somebody else has been making an impact at camp. Another rookie, in fact, is going to be Evan Hull, the fifth round rookie who we've talked about in pretty much every training camp video that we've put out. And he just continues to impress people day after day, practice after practice, especially with Jonathan Taylor not practicing on PUP. And then Zach Moss breaking his arm. And now Evan Hull is thrusted into a position where he's able to work with the second team. The fact that he continues to impress people while working with the second team, you have to imagine at some point they're going to let him start getting some of those first team reps, even though they bring in. Kenyon Drake, even though Deion Jackson's still there, I think Evan Hull, if he has another really good practice on Saturday and continues to impress people, once we go into practice next week, I think there's a good chance you see Evan Hull start to take first team reps. So when we're talking about camp standouts, Evan Hull is a name we continue to talk about. And at this point, and with the running back situation for Indianapolis being the way it is, Evan Hull is a name that people need to remember. Okay, so then you have Josh Downs, who is basically in the same situation, right? He's a rookie coming in. He was drafted higher in the third round instead of the fifth, and he's competing with a veteran for a spot in the starting lineup. Isaiah McKenzie, coming from the Bills, has plenty of experience, especially in the slot. So it's going to be tough to see Josh Downs being able to get in the lineup, but from the sounds of it, this past week, once they got the pads on and things started moving full speed and things started getting physical, it started to sound like Josh Downs was not only making ground on Isaiah McKenzie, but may have surpassed Isaiah McKenzie. And of course, like I keep mentioning, Saturday's practice, tonight's practice will have probably a big impact on what's going to happen going into preseason week one and what happens as we start rolling into the regular season. So we're going to continue to watch how everything shakes out for each one of these guys. But Josh Downs is somebody that I've been really excited about since he got drafted, being a 5'9 guy and having an 84% contested catch rate in college. I mean, that's just absolutely ridiculous. I'm so excited for everything that Josh Downs brings to the table, and I think he can be something that unlocks this Colts offense which is why I honestly think the team is fine with saying, you know what, maybe we will go ahead and trade Jonathan Taylor. We like Evan Hull. We like Josh Downs. We have Isaiah McKenzie in this offense also. Anthony Richardson, pretty dynamic. So honestly, with all the pieces that are coming in and all the pieces that Chris Ballard has continued to draft over the years, it looks like all those pieces are finally able to, to start showing out a little bit because of the quarterback play, whether it's Gardner Minshew balling out with the first and second team or Anthony Richardson balling out with the first or second team. You know, Kylan Granson, Anthony Richardson, Evan Hull, Josh Downs, these guys have massive opportunities, and these guys have been camp standouts along with the lone defensive guy in Daryl Baker Jr. And Colts Nation, I would love to know your thoughts on anything you've heard about any of the guys from Colts camp, you let me know down in the comments. I'd love talking about the Colts, okay? I can do this all day long. Let's talk about what you're hearing. Talk about what I'm hearing. Let's compare notes, okay? So with that said, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I'll see you for the next video.